Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day so far. So what I'm going to do is I am going to share with everyone uh, a video of me reading through an actual physical Bible. Prior to this, I would usually use the YouVersion Bible app. I would pick a reading plan and I would read through that. Um, sometimes I would just allow the app to do all the talking, just listen to it. But there's really no comparison to um, reading an actual Bible. So what I have here is an old copy of the Student Bible. This is published by Zondervan Publishing, uh, as you can see here. Now, uh, the Student Bible is a really great uh, study Bible, especially if you want to study the Bible like a student. Uh, that's the name student Bible um, so what's great about this is that um, there are parts of this Bible where you get so many great insights so there are parts of it as we uh, read through it there will be uh, what is called insights uh, there are portions where uh, you can read on a sidebar insights about what you're reading. There's also a guided tour uh, part. And there's also a section which tells you about uh, 100 people you should know about. So that's spread all throughout uh, the pages of the Student Bible. So again, like I said, it's a great resource if you want to study the Bible like a student so there are many other parts of the bible uh, of this version of the bible oh by the way uh, the version that, that we'll be reading is an niv or the new international version uh, of or translation of the bible so so many other resources within this student bible there are reading plans that you can um, follow uh, so you can read through the entire bible using the guided tour okay but um we'll skip most of that as i plan to just read through uh probably a chapter at a time of this bible so what i will do is that i will start with the new testament starting with the book of matthew so i hope you'll uh, sit through and sit with me and learn from the bible together okay so let's start with the book of matthew it says here a bridge from old to new why start with the list of names uh, chapter 1 verse 21 she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name of jesus because he will save his people from their sins okay. for 400 years nothing new was added to the bible uh, the prophets were silent during this time middle eastern empires rose and fell and the tiny nation of israel suffered under the domination of greater powers like greece and rome but then something uh, momentous happened a baby was born sorry as i uh, try to adjust my camera okay my camera is not responding okay sorry i'm doing this live okay but then something momentous happened a baby was born a baby unlike any who had ever come before by introducing this baby who grew into the man jesus the book of matthew opens a whole new section of the bible the new testament matthew makes his intentions clear from the very first sentence he connects jesus arrival with the old testament storyline jesus was a jew he says the son of abraham and also a king the son of david 
Matthew then sets out to prove an audacious claim. This Jesus from the humble town of Nazareth is the very Messiah, the deliverer uh, back, promised back in the Old Testament. Christ is a Greek translation of the word Messiah. So put that in mind. Christ means Messiah. It's a Greek translation of the word. Okay, so Jesus, family tree. People all over the world, especially Jews, had been eagerly awaiting the Messiah. His coming would change the entire history of the world. They believed. Could this carpenter's son be the long-expected king? To answer that question, Matthew starts with a genealogy. Okay. Genealogies or long lists of names rarely prove interesting to anyone but the people directly involved. To those people, however, the lists are anything but boring. So, it may be boring to us, but for those uh, who are part of that family line, that is absolutely not boring. Listen to one modern author describe what it was like to hear an ancient genealogy. There is an expression, the peak experience, a moment which emotionally can never again be called in your life. I had mine. In that first day in the village of uh, Jufore in Black West Africa, goosebumps came, came, out on, came out on me the size of marbles. With those words, Alex Haley, author of Roots, recalls the day he first heard from the lips of an aged storyteller the account of young Kunta Kinte being taken captive by slave traders in 1752. Okay. The Importance of Roots Haley's ancestors in Tennessee and Virginia had descended directly from native African captured in the tiny village of Gambia. The day he listened to the gentle African elder recite, and so and so took as a wife, so and so, and begat so and so, the final link in Haley's family chain snapped into place. Roots tells the story of this connection. In a similar way, the book of Matthew doesn't begin with Jesus' birth, but reaches back further to establish his roots. If indeed Jesus is the Messiah, his ancestors must match up to that claim. As any student of history knows, kings don't merely declare themselves. They must belong to a royal line. Matthew traces Jesus' lineage to the father of the Jewish, uh, Jewish race, Abraham, who first received the promise of the Messiah, then to the great Jewish king, David. links to the Old Testament. After recording Jesus' bloodline, Matthew narrates the story of Jesus' life on earth. He relies heavily on the Old Testament, quoting it more frequently than does any other New Testament author. Note such phrases as, so was fulfilled, uh, was said through the prophets. The first book in the New Testament then stands as the gospel that pulls things together, the link between the old and the new. Matthew starts with Jesus' roots, but he also contrasts Jesus with the traditional Jewish picture of the Messiah. The coming of Jesus, a king, ended thousands of years of eager waiting, but he came to establish a wholly new kind of kingdom, a kingdom different from what anyone expected. Okay, so we'll skip this part uh, where it says how to read Matthew. And I will just uh, proceed to actually reading the scripture. Okay, I need to adjust. So sorry. Okay, so the genealogy of Jesus. A record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, Judah the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar, Perez the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Minadab, Aminadab the father of Nashon, Nashon the father of Salmon, Salmon the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab, Boaz the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. 
Solomon, the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam, the father of Abijah, Abijah, the father of Asa, Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, the father of uh, Jehoram, Jehoram, the father of Uzziah, Uzziah, the father of Jotham, Jotham, the father of Ahaz, Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah, Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh, Manasseh, the father of Ammon, Ammon, the father of Josiah, and Josiah, the father of Jeconiah, and me readjust his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon after the exile to Babylon Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel Shealtiel the father of Zerubbabel Zerubbabel the father of Abiud Abiud the father of Eliakim Eliakim the father of Azor Azor the father of Zadok Zadok the father of Akim Akim the father of Eliud Eliud the father of Eleazar Eliezer, the father of Mathan, Mathan, the father of Jacob, uh, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So let's uh, go up to this part where there are insights. So it says here, uh, referencing chapter 1, verse 6, Shady Ancestors. Matthew's list differs from many Jewish genealogies by including women and a surprising selection of women at that. Tamar, a Gentile, tricked and seduced her father-in-law, then bore illegitimate twins. You can see it in Genesis 3 verse, uh, Genesis 38 rather. Rahab, another Gentile, once worked as a prostitute. See Joshua chapter 2 verse 6. Ruth also grew up as a pagan Gentile. You can see it in Ruth chapters 1 to 4. And Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, committed adultery with King David. See 2 Samuel 11 and 12. Many of the men listed had unsavory past as well. Taken together, these ancestors of Jesus vividly demonstrate God's ability to work with all sorts of people. Okay, now moving to the birth of Jesus. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared, sorry, appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are uh, to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Okay, drop down to a portion here at the bottom where there's an insight. So more than engage. Okay, it says... A uh, Jewish custom in Joseph and Mary's day recognized a state called betrothal that fell somewhere between our modern uh, commitments of engagement and marriage. A betrothal was more binding than an engagement. Okay, let me read it again. A betrothal was more binding than an engagement. It could only be broken with an act of divorce. But if a betrothed woman became pregnant, she was regarded as an adulteress. So just imagine the pressure that was on both Joseph and Mary during that time. Okay, so that's Matthew 1. Uh, I hope you can join me again tomorrow for chapter 2 and onwards. So I bless all of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Goodbye.